Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, we're gonna take a look at some of the newest items we just started carrying on KarateMart.com. But before I begin, if you could just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. Okay, so this week for Weapons Wednesday, we're gonna try something just a little bit different. Amanda's gonna hand me a bunch of different boxes, and in each box, she's chosen two weapons that are kind of similar to each other. So we're gonna open up each box and we're just gonna kind of review each item. So, Amanda, why don't you go ahead and hand me the first box. Awesome, thank you. You know, um, while I'm opening this, I just wanna mention, you know, we're coming a, up to the holidays now and um, we're dealing with some major logistical problems with the shipping companies right now. Um, so if you're gonna order anything for Christmas, do it now. I can't repeat that enough. Um, we're just seeing like packages we're shipping with the different shipping companies are taking way longer than normal to get to people. And then there's days that the shipping companies don't even arrive to pick the packages up. So just order all your packages for Christmas early. Just wanna state that. Um, but yeah, this is awesome, Amanda. Looks like she wrapped up two different, ooh, all right. Looks like uh, she wrapped up a shillelagh for us. That's pretty awesome, we've never really talked about that one before. And uh, she also typed up this little description for me. So let's take a look at that. Okay, gotcha. So <clears throat> this is a black thorn shillelagh walking stick. Um, and these things, are really, really interesting, and it's mostly because of the history behind them. So, hundreds of years ago, almost a thousand years ago, um, Ireland was ruled by Britain. And because of that, they weren't allowed to have weapons. So, I know you know the history of a lot of different countries and what they did with weapons. Well, Ireland was similar in the respect that they chose to create their own weapon that uh, would be just disguised as a normal object, which would be a walking stick, and, uh, turned it into an awesome, awesome weapon, and they learned how to use these things. In the past, what they would do is they would make these out of a wood called blackthorn, sometimes oak, but usually a wood called blackthorn. And they would take the wood and they would stick it in their fireplace. And over a period of months, sometimes even years, the wood would get this black stain to it because of the soot. And, um, and it would also harden it and seal it up. Um, and then they would have this kind of end cap that was a little bit heavier, and they would use that to swing with. Sometimes they'd even inject that with lead so it was really heavy. But uh, the way this was used was like, okay, so you would use it to like block something, and then you'd swing it around and you'd take out a kneecap. Um, just a really, really cool weapon. So I love hearing about countries, how they kind of got around the different weapon laws and figured out how to make their own weapons. Super cool. I mean, if you know the history of most of the martial arts weapons, um, they're, they're all that way. In fact, I was uh, looking at kunai the other day and just uh, seeing how they kind of came from just a trowel. So I just, I love learning about that stuff. I find it so interesting. Um, but the shillelagh walking stick is really, really a cool weapon. And this one is made out of polypropylene, um, which makes it virtually indestructible, which is pretty awesome. So, you know, you've got a walking stick that's very sturdy. Let's see, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna put some weight on it and see if it can hold me. So it's bending a little bit. I'm also over 230 pounds, so it's bending a little bit, but that thing's not gonna break. And it's got this head on it that's a little bit heavier. The whole thing weighs about one, 1 1.5 pounds, so that's a good weight, um, but it's used as a bludgeoning instrument. And a um, little fun fact, if you're a sports fan, you might know of uh, Boston Celtics. Well, in their logo for the Boston Celtics, you see a leprechaun who's actually holding a shillelagh and he's kind of leaning on it like this. So just kind of an interesting fun fact with that. Um, but uh, let's see if there's anything else I need to mention about this. Uh, very, very cool. Um, I actually really like these weapons, they're, they're pretty neat. But let's look at the other item that Amanda gave us because she's going to give us two items that are kind of similar. So, let's see what this guy is. Okay, so this is the Knob Handle Sword King. Okay. 
All right, it's kind of cool. I first, upon first glance, it's nice because it actually looks like a walking stick or a cane. I kind of like that, the knob handle design. Um, I know what a lot of you guys are thinking is, how the heck are you gonna pull out a sword cane if someone's attacking you? This is way too slow. And I get that, I totally 100% agree that's way too slow to pull out something like that. But there is a definite advantage to this type of sword cane where you actually have to take your time to screw it in. And that is that it is connected in such a solid way that you can use this to strike with. And this, in my opinion, is a pretty cool weapon because this head is solid metal and it's very heavy and you could definitely, definitely swing with that. So I definitely like that. Um, you know, and as far as like pulling this out, one of the things I don't talk enough about, um, you know, I've been training in the martial arts my whole life and uh, one of the most important aspects of martial arts is awareness. When I'm walking down the street, I am always paying attention to everyone that is around me at all times. Not enough people do that. And when I was in college, I was a bouncer at a club. And one of the main takeaways I got from that is I got used to studying the people around me, knowing when people are starting to get upset about things and how to deal with people like that. And um, so I think awareness is one of the things that isn't talked about enough in the martial arts. So if you are walking down the street with something like this and you notice, if you catch out a glance out of the side of your eye that there is some sort of dangerous situation coming up ahead, that should give you enough time to do what you need to do. Now, I'm not a huge fan of sword canes and taking out a sword, that's just not my type of thing, but just being prepared, just thinking through, what am I going to do if I'm attacked? And, you know, just having something like this that could help to protect me is a pretty cool thing. So I actually like this, even though it is slow and you'd have to unscrew it, I would personally use it for this aspect of it. So I think it's pretty cool. So uh, let's see, let's look at something else. All right, Amanda, um, I'm gonna put this away real quick and why don't you hand me something else? All right, awesome, yeah, whichever one. Okay, cool. You know, it's funny, I, uh, every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. we do the Weapons Wednesday thing. 8 a.m. Arizona time, and I'm lucky enough that our audience is all over the world, so I speak to some people in India, some people in the Philippines, and it's just so fun getting to know them and just kind of see what they're all about. Uh, but one of them every week, uh, Vihan, asks me, so which Marvel movie are you watching right now? Because I've, I've been doing this thing with my girlfriend, Nicole, where we watch a Marvel movie every week. And so like recently we just watched Thor Dark World. So I guess uh, this week we're watching Iron Man 3. And I think Captain America Winter Soldier's after that. So Vihan, that's what we're watching this week. But uh, anyway, okay, so it looks like I've got two stun guns in this. It looks like one of them is a stun baton and the other one, is a little knuckle stun gun. So that's kind of cool. So I'm just gonna look at the, the little description sheet that Amanda gave me. Okay, so this is the black knuckle stun gun. So let's just look at it. It weighs about two ounces. So I like that. I like how small that is, how light that is. Feels pretty good. You know, we have another one that's kind of similar to this. And my problem with the other one is that it's so bulky here that you can't squeeze correctly on the trigger. This one looks like it's built in a way that uh, actually could function properly. So let's just test that. So I'm holding it in my hand. Yeah. So if I just push my palm against it, it works. So I, I really like at that aspect of it. Um, as far as durability goes though, I don't know if you could use this as a knuckle duster. I feel like it would probably break. So I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't myself use this as a knuckle duster, but I do like the design. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so it says that it's 28 million volts. Um, if you watched any of my videos, you know that we don't take that number seriously uh, because the manufacturers just throw a random number on their stun guns or stun batons to make them look like they're more powerful than other ones. And it's funny too, because when I was probably 18 years old, I bought my first stun baton. And I remember looking on the websites and 
being looking and finding one that was like, I think it was like 200 million volts or something and buying that one specifically because it was a higher voltage. But we carry these military grade stun batons that are just like a little higher end than our normal stun batons. And what I like so much about them is the manufacturers actually put a voltage that's semi-realistic on them. Um, this one in specific is nine million volts. So we carry ones that are like a hundred million volts, but I'd be willing to guarantee that this high end stun baton is actually stronger than any of the hundred million volt one, even though it only says nine million volts. This thing is actually made out of an aircraft aluminum, um, a military grade aircraft aluminum is what it says, um, which is pretty sweet. It's about 24 inches long, so that's a good length. Um, it's got this metal clip on it, which is pretty sweet. I like that. I actually like this better than the ones that have the holsters because the holsters kind of get hung up on the stun batons. So these you can just grab, pull out, and you got it ready. Um, also, this thing has a flashlight on it. Let's see, just turn it on. Okay, so it's got a regular light, then it's got a low beam, and then it's got the strobe effect, which is pretty sweet. I like that. Um, and then to use the stun baton, so we just flip this switch, and there we go. So let's just look at these really quick. So this one's 28 million volts, the manufacturer says. And you know, the funny thing is, I am willing to test this one out because I know that this is not 28 million volts. Um, but we've got to make sure that it actually is an effective weapon. So I'm going to have Amanda stun me with this just to prove that it is effective. Um, so let's start with that first. So let's just see how this goes. Hi guys. Ah, jeez. <laughs> so <laughs> what's, what's so funny is the stunning doesn't even phase me anymore. If you've watched my videos, I've been getting stunned for so long now that I don't even like think about it anymore, but it still, it gets me every time. It still hurts. Um, that one definitely hurt. And um, you know, it's interesting. The louder they are, it seems like the more it hurts me. Um, so this one's got a good sound to it um, and it's definitely effective. So I like that. Um, this guy right here, I know is much stronger than that one. Even though it says nine million volts, I am not gonna allow Amanda to stun me with it. Um, what's also cool about this is it's got this little hand guard on it that kind of flips out and will completely block your hand if you were getting attacked. Um, so I like that aspect. I think it's kind of unique. I haven't seen that on stun batons before. So that's pretty sweet. And let's see if there's anything else I should tell you guys about this. Um, no, not really. Uh, both pretty cool. I, uh, I honestly think both of these are awesome. So I'm gonna put these away and let's let Amanda hand me something else. Let's see, okay. We're using envelopes now. Okay, she chose uh, two butterfly knives it looks like which is awesome. You know, it's actually really cool because um, we've got so many new butterfly knives on KarateMart.com right now. So many. And I know that there's still a stack of like a lot that are just sitting there waiting to get added to the site. So over the next couple of months, you're going to see so many more added. And we carry them in all price ranges. We've got the inexpensive one for learning. We've got the more expensive ones for people who've been doing it for a while. Um, but let's just look at these two really quick. Uh, this one is the Quicksilver Butterfly Knife. Okay, so on first glance, I love, love the look of this Butterfly Knife. I think it is so cool, so unique. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely pretty tight right now. It's going to take some loosening up before it actually is good for tricks and things. Um, but it's got, uh, it's got some pretty good play on it right now. Um, so... One of the things I personally don't like about it is that it uses screws up on the top instead of rivets. Now, there's gonna be a billion people who disagree with me on that. And I'm gonna see it in the comments later. And the reason people like screws is because you can tighten them to the exact play that you want with your butterfly knife. 
Also, if you want, you can take out the screw, you can take off the blade, and you can add a trainer blade to it. So in that respect, screws are awesome. But what I've noticed from using them for so many years is that the screws tend to kind of come out and you lose play and you got to tighten them again. And I just prefer a rivet that's in there at exactly the, the, the tightness that I want um, instead of having to fumble around with the screws. That's just me. Um, people will disagree and that's fine. Um, but uh, let's look, let's compare this to the other one she gave me. Okay, so she gave me the Crimson Spider Butterfly Knife. And this is, uh, this is one of the CSGO style ones. So we've got a straight style and then we got the CSGO style. Um, CSGO has been getting way more popular lately and they're cool. I mean, they look kind of cool. Um, this also has the spring latch on it, which means that I can tighten, I can kind of hold it tight and the latch will open. Spring latch, I'm still not sure if I like it that much. Um, I actually, because I grew up using the non-spring latch, I actually kind of prefer the non-spring just because it's, wow, that is tight. Um, over time, that'll get a lot looser, but um, yeah, just there's just something about this latch that's just sticking up like that that just kind of bothers me. So, I mean, there's a lot of people who love them. It's just not for me. The CSGO styling, I find that it, uh, it looks really cool, looks really unique. You know, you'll see it on different video games, but it just doesn't feel right in my hand. It just, I mean, it doesn't flow correctly. Like as I'm doing certain twists, the, the curved handle's hitting my hand funny. And I know that there's people that love them because they're, they're good for certain tricks. They're good for certain finger spins and things, but they just feel off to me. So personally, I'm a bigger fan of the straight ones, um, but CSGO is, it's cool. Like if you're a butterfly knife person, if you want to collect them, I'd try some of each, you know, see which one works well for you. Um, but personally, I like rivets. I don't like the spring latches and I like straight. That's just me, um, but I don't know. Everybody's different on that stuff. Uh, let's just uh, look at these guys a little bit further. So this one actually has a 1065 German surgical steel blade, um, which is good. Yeah, pretty sharp too, it's pretty good. Um, I like that. Um, and I'm pretty sure you can sharpen that up a lot more too uh, with just a stone, a wet stone. Um, so that's pretty awesome. This guy has a stainless steel blade on it. It's super sharp though, I'll tell you what. I'd prefer this blade, but this one is super sharp and I love how they do this spider design on it. I think that is so interesting and so unique. Um, so if you're showing this off to friends, that design is awesome. Um, one thing I should mention though is make sure you check your local laws before carrying any of these items, especially like stun guns and things. Super illegal in certain areas, so definitely check your local laws. But let's go ahead and put these away and look at something else. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Ooh, this one's heavy. It's heavy for uh, such a small envelope. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, so I guess uh, Amanda wanted us to go with throwing weapons next. That's uh, interesting. Grab the fact sheet. Okay. All right. So we've got the professional throwing knives and we've got the four kings throwing cards. So let's look at the four kings throwing cards first. Okay. You know, um, I think we've shown off throwing cards. Let's just look at them really quick. They look awesome. I love, so there's different types of throwing cards. And um, we'll just pull the, one of these guys out. Okay, that's awesome. So there's some things I just love about these throwing cards. I love how the design is white all the way around. There's a number of throwing cards that you find where the card's white, but then the edges are, you know, they're um, sharpened up so they look silver. And I would prefer to have a throwing card that looks just like a playing card. Um, now, granted, this is a little bit smaller than a normal playing card. I mean, it's not a lot smaller, but it's a little bit smaller. Um, and then the back is like completely flat. So that's one thing I would kind of prefer to be a little bit different. Like 
with these cards, I would like to see an edge that kind of goes on both sides. It's not going to affect the throwing any at all, though. Um, so if you look at, there's two of my videos where I show these guys off, different types that we carry, and I show you how to throw them. I'm not going to throw these today, um, but uh, these are really awesome. I, I just love the looks of them. I, I love the whole gambit thing. I think that's so cool. Um, so definitely an awesome thing. I can see this also being a really great Christmas gift, honestly. Um, getting a set of kings for your king or something like that. Uh, just a, just kind of a cool idea. So, uh, but let's look at the professional throwing knives. Okay, so I'm, I'm so glad that Amanda grabbed these ones. I think these are such a great set of throwing knives that uh, don't get enough attention. So, and, and the problem is we've kind of done it to ourselves. We've got probably hundreds of different throwing knives on KarateMart.com. Hundreds. And um, there's so many different styles to choose from. There's so, so many different sizes, so many different weights. And um, the problem is, like, if you're new to throwing knives, you don't know what to get. And I get that totally because, you know, growing up, I grabbed any sort of knife I could find. I used, I remember having a survival knife when I was like 14, and that is what I trained how to throw knives with. Like one of those big ones that has the big round compass at the end, that's how I learned to throw knives. Kind of ridiculous. I remember it broke like a little ways in, but... Um, so yeah, you've got a million different throwing knives to choose from, and you've got to decide which one you're going to take. And um, the thing is, like, when you're learning them, it's fun to start out with the super cheap ones. It is. I mean, we've got sets that are like 10 bucks on Karate Mart, where it's like a few knives, and, you know, they're usually a little bit smaller. Um, and those ones are fun to play with. I actually really like the small throwing knives, too. They don't throw as nicely, though. Like, thicker, big throwing knives like this that are heavier, throw way nicer. I'm just going to pull the wrap off of this. Um, there's something about the weight that allows it to just throw properly. Um, whereas the small ones, they tend to bounce more off the wall and kind of back at you. Um, and uh, they just, they, they don't allow you to get enough force behind them. So the small ones aren't always the best bet. Uh, these big ones are they're a little more expensive, but they're just, they're just perfect. And um, the thing is also, like, depending on your throwing style, you're going to want a specific type of knife. Like, okay, so let's say we're doing a no-spin method where we throw it and it kind of comes out of your hand like that. If you have some big bulky thing at the end, like a kunai or something, it makes it more difficult to kind of let it flow out of your hand. Where these guys just, like, they're shaped just perfectly for any type of throwing you want to do. So, um, you know, I, I don't think I've ever shown in any of my videos how to throw knives. So, I'm going to go ahead and take these in back and just teach you how to throw them really quick. Because these ones are actually just perfect for throwing. Um, they're, uh, let's see... These guys, yeah, these are eight ounces each. Like a lot of the little throwing knives are like an ounce and a half. So eight ounces is absolutely perfect. And they're 10 inches long. I love how long they are. I typically wouldn't suggest any knife that's under six inches. And I wouldn't suggest any knife that's under two ounces. I think it's going to be more difficult to throw. Um, but, you know, it's good to get to learn all different types of knives. Because, like, even the ones that are shaped funny, you can learn methods to throw them properly. But let's go in back and actually test these guys out. And I'll kind of show you an easy way that I've found to throw them. So let's go in back. So when learning how to throw knives, there are a whole bunch of different methods that are popular out there. All you need to do is go ahead and look on YouTube and you're going to find a bunch of people who can teach you how to throw a knife properly. Now, I've never done competition or anything, so I'm probably not the best person to ask. But I've learned a method that really works well for me. So when you're learning how to throw, there's a few different ways to do it properly. You can do the rotational method, which is when you throw it and it spins and then it strikes its target. You can also do the no spin method, which is where you throw it and it kind of glides out of your hand and strikes the target. Or you can do the half spin method, which is when you kind of throw it and it spins halfway and sticks into the target. Now I found for me, there's something called the military half spin that works well for me. And what that is, is kind of holding it like this, kind of on the tip of your fingers and using a handshake grip 
where you kind of put your thumb there and you choke up or down depending on how far your target is. And then you just kind of throw it and release it. And as you release, it spins about halfway and strikes into the target. Now for me, I found that to be the easiest, but I would try a bunch of different methods and find what works best for you. But let's go ahead and give this one a try. I found that I've had to choke up a little bit. Um, seems to help. So I've choked up to right here on it. Seems to be a good, for this distance, it seems to be about right. That might have been too much. So as you can see, the military half spin method works really well for me, but if you're gonna learn how to throw knives, you might as well try all the methods. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful for you guys, learning how I like to throw throwing knives. But uh, I just want to mention, it's Thanksgiving tomorrow, and um, I just want to say thank you to all of the great audience members that we have watching my videos. There are so many of you that every week are so kind and just leave the nicest comments in the comments section. And I'll tell you what, it's those kind of comments that actually keep me going each week. So I really, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I personally respond to most of the comments um, and I just, I just really appreciate it. And I'm there sitting there at my computer on Wednesday mornings talking to you guys and you're just such a nice group of people. So I really appreciate it. Um, one thing I'd like to mention is I'm seeing a lot of negativity out there in the world right now. And um, when you go out in public, when you go to a grocery store or something, just find a random person and compliment them in some way. If you see that they did their hair nice, compliment their hair. Just say something positive to someone today just to make them feel a little better. Um, I, I feel like uh, spreading joy, spreading love, spreading happiness is one of the best things we can possibly do in this world. Um, but I want to thank you guys and um, if you could just check out KarateMart.com. We carry all kinds of awesome weapons on there and make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. But until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday. Yeah.